The most important thing about Wing Chun is guarding the center. Guarding the center doesn't mean that it has to be dead on center. The center can be, uh, the boundary can be, if you are able to cross your arm down and up, then you are able to use two arms at the same time. So if you, you can face your opponents from here to here, then you're able to use two arms at the same time. And Wing Chun teach you to, to guard your body with your elbow, so keep your elbow in. And, and also it teaches you to use two arms at the same time, so that means every defense you should be accompanied with a counter attack. So for instance, if he throws a punch in, check and punch, check and punch. Right? It's almost simultaneously, check and punch, check and punch. Right? So you notice that I, I got close, I check close to the elbow, so I'm using the, my palm to guide my punch in and I'm stepping out to the blind side so I don't need to fight with, deal with this arm immediately. If this arm forces its way in, I can, I can pin the two together. So you go from here, check and punch, check and punch. Uh, we turn this position around, punch, punch. So it teach you, Wing Chun also teach you to watch the elbow, right? Because if I watch the fist, the fist is very close to me. It's very hard for me to see. But if I watch the elbow, and I can cover the elbow, and I can see. You know. For so straight punch, the elbow is moving two and a half times slower than the fist. So the fist is going out from here to here. Elbows going up from here to here, two and a half times. For round punch, the elbow is moving at least four or five times slower than the fist. It's further away from your arm, from, from your eyes, and it's easier for you to see. So, um, so you watch the elbow, and he steps in, check, punch. So you want to go to fight on the blind side, that means that you are positioning, you are positioning, your center line is parallel to his shoulder and you're controlling the elbow so you don't need to. Um, when, when you, uh, when you are using the cross arm block, say for instance, because you will not be able to counter attack. So usually, usually with cross arm block, you always put a kick in so that, so that you're putting pressure back on the other person. Um, I'm going to run through some very, very simple technique against different systems and, uh, and then we will uh, introduce some technique that comes useful for you. Okay, now, um, watching the elbow, the system I show you is called BOEC, Balance Opening Elbow Arms Cross, and teach you to fight on the blind side, teach you to use two arms at the same time. And then I will run through dealing with boxes, kickboxes, dealing with uh, other systems, dealing with grapplers, and also, we will probably run some technique against uh, knives and against uh, poles and baseball bats. Um, see, remember the system I showed you is called BOEC. So if, if the balance has problem, you can exploit it. If uh, the person exposed too much opening, you can exploit it. So the elbow is exposed, it become a target area. So uh, you can, you can from here, you can check this. So you, you attack, you attack the elbow, and then you lock up the other arm, and then you have opening from here. 
Uh, but the whole main uh, idea is not to stand fighting in front of the person. So fighting in front of the person, you could deal with two arms and you'd be too busy, you know, uh, to dealing with the attack and you won't have time, right? So you can, from here, from here, pressure point here, you can strike here, okay? So you, all, you can jam this up from here, or you can push this, okay? So you got, So when you, when you go in cross leg, you always step inside of the stance. Don't lock up your stance because he go, he go backward, he's going to pull you with him, you know. So you give yourself plenty of room, right? And then you, you attack, you control the elbow, he can't kick from here, he can't kick because you're controlling his balance, all right? If you step in, Parallel leg, you step outside, don't step inside because he's going to turn you around, you're going to be in trouble. So you step outside, okay. Uh, we're dealing with uh, a system that fights with the arm down and exposing a lot of target area. Firstly, you have to know the priority of targets because the system I show you is BOEC, is watching the elbow, and you know that if you're going to hit him here, he's going to jab you or push you away. So he's set, setting a trap on here, all right? But, but if you hit, if you select the target area that close to the elbow, so you will restrict, you will restrict to, to the, uh, uh, his uh, right arm, right? So from here, so if you, if you attack, you go in and attack, you're going to attack to close to, to the target area, uh, to the elbow area. Select the target area close to the elbow. So, so you force him to swing at you. And then once he swing at you, and you, you, would, you would have a very good opening from here because the other arm is far too far away to do anything. Okay, so when you see somebody had their arm down here, you jam up this elbow, right? So you jam up this elbow, right? You step outside, parallel leg, step outside, right? So you're watching the other elbow, if it swings at you, right? You're still going over on this side, right? Okay. Okay. All right. So you, or you could do this. You could attack here, and then divert his attention, right? Because when when he's standing on the side, this is the target, and then you soften him up from down here, from here. Okay. If you fight with somebody, maybe like this. Because this arm already extended, so it's very little use. Right? So you can knock it away, kick here, and then, right? Or you can come in inside, come in inside, right? See, you see how far I go from the step away from, from the opponent? I step right across here. Right? He can't kick because I pin his weight here. Right? He can't use the other arm because his, two, his, his weight's on this side. Okay, so. Right? So you knock this away. Right? So you're opening up here. Okay. Or you can do this kick from here and Kick from here, and then, so your eyes are watching the elbow, covering the elbow. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you deal with 
um, people that are trying to crowd you from here. So you jam this up with a bong saw. Take this across. I'm here. All right, so if you say moving in from here, side step, side step. Trying to fight the distance you're com comfortable with. Right? Don't fight the other person's distance. So you're coming in to crouch you, side step, right? and take him across. So he's going over there. His opening's here. Okay? So you jam up this arm. Right? This arm cannot be used. You take this across. This arm's useless. You pin this up. Okay? So you jam this up, take this across. I'm going to show you some technique to deal with kicks. Uh, let's deal with just uh, medium, high, and uh, high kicks. Uh, in Wing Chun, when you put your arm out to guard, you divide your body into two halves, open half and blind half. Right? On the dark side is the blind half. Now let's deal with Let's deal with the kick that comes from the open side first. Either you're on a neutral side stance or on a front stance. It really doesn't make any difference because once you put your arm up there. So if he throws a kick from the open side and then you just stop it and drag it down. Right? Stop it and drag it down. Stop it and drag it down, right? So you can do it a little bit faster. Stop it and then knee it, right? So stop it and drag it down, right? So you so you using one palm next to the knee and one palm you block one palm near the shin at the end of the near the angle, right? So palm and knee up, right? And then you, because you directed where you want to learn, and you're controlling his balance. So from here, stop and kick. Right. Stop, kick, attacking his supporting leg, or stop and kick to the groin. Right. Stop, kick. And kick okay now so this can be dealt with this technique can be dealt with front kick no difference right because you just take a little bit right right so you you want to use a technique that is so simple so effective you don't have to think. Right? As soon as you see it coming on the other side, kick. Right? Or you can deal with a side kick. Right? Open side. Side kick. Right? Same thing. Right? So you stop it coming up. Right? Okay. Right. Okay. Now, if you have to deal with somebody kick from the blind side, so you're from here, kick. Right. So as I block, as I block, I attack the pressure point there. Right. Or I attack the knee. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're going to deal with low kicks. Low kicks, same thing. You have an open side and have a blind side, right? So open side is is from this side. Blind side is from this side. All right. So any kick that come from open side, right? 
right? So it doesn't make contact, that's fine, right? It doesn't make contact, that's fine, right? Okay, but if you kick a bit higher here, right? Then what I did was just I attack the pressure point here, right? I'm using my knee, so when it make contact, right? Okay. So if you kick from the blind side and then you just jam it up, you pick up your leg, you pick up your leg, pick up your leg, jam it up. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, so if you have to deal with a crescent kick, all right? So you got your arm in front of you, right? And you take the kick at the knee. You step in. So you putting pressure on there. Right. Okay. All right. So let's turn around here. All right. So you just attack the knee, and you put put him off balance. B O E C. Okay. Now I'm going to show you some. Technique again, some of the shoots to your leg against grapplers. Uh, if, you, if you can operate on the neutral stance, you have more, more, more uh, options. But even though if you operate on a front stance, say, so a person comes in, right, you're using this as a hit, you hook this around, and then we roll this person together huh? or from here you pull him down and the knee from here okay here you stop him temporarily you change direction right and then you can roll him from here or from here and Pressure point here, here. Okay. Even if somebody grabs your leg, say for instance, he grabs your leg, it still doesn't matter. You widen your stance, and because you only need one good shot, one good shot is 0 0.11 of a second. So the target area, the pressure point, pressure point, pressure point, the throw, the tempo, the face. The eye, okay. So a person comes in, right? Because once you once you identify his waist on the front foot, he comes charging, right? Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to show you some Dimak technique. Dimak, you can use weapons, the Phoenix knuckle, or the digital thumb, or maybe the finger. However, the Phoenix knuckle is easier to train than, than the beauty. So, um, it has, uh, you do it five movements, a straight movement, Downward movement, upward movement, cross, and inward. Right, straight, downward, upward, cross, inward. Right? So straight, downward, upward, cross, inward. Right? Straight, downward, upward, cross, 
inward, okay? Now, before we do the dim up, I'm gonna show you the target area first. The temple, under the jaw here, and this point here. The throw area, this one here, and the solar plexus. This point here, point here. Um, they are the main area. Uh, of course, you know, there are pressure point here, there's pressure point here, there's pressure point here. You can use, right? And also pressure point there. You can use, you know, for, for uh, and then pressure point here, here, here. Okay. So there's six meridian that goes in, uh, three goes in, and three comes out. So so there's six points on the elbow, six points on the wrist, and uh, temple underneath the jaw here, here, and here and the solar plexus, okay? Um, the hardest thing about Dima is to strike accurately towards the target area, all right? Another thing is that because people are covering up, say, okay, my target area is the, is the throat here, and the person is covering up, there's no way there's no way you can just go, go in and strike somebody's throat like that. So every dimak strike has a specific technique. So if I want to strike here, okay. So what I'll do is, I go in, I go in, right, cover the elbow, and then take over here and then I go here, right? So I'm gonna show you in a normal speed, right? So I go in, go here, right? Here, 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 all right? So I'm using, I'm using the strike to take to position where I, right? So it's one or one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. So you you strike this one like you're using the elbow. Okay. So we turn around here. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so it's one, two, three. Right? One, two, three. Okay. The next technique, say the target area is here. Okay, so, so he's facing you. It's very hard for you to get to here, all right? So if he throws the punch, all right? Hucks out, palm strike, and then you turn him around, all right? So from here, there, all right? There, and then you turn him around, Okay, so one, two, right, three, turn him around, and then you've got this point here, right? So the point, the elbow, and this point has a definite relationship because you do that, that opens up for that point there. Okay, so you go from here, one, two, three, four, five, come back here, six. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
six, right? So this controls this point here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Right? So we go around the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So using the elbow to control that target area there. One, two, three, four, five. Another point that is very popular is the tempo. But however, the tempo, uh, if the person is facing you and the tempo is facing the other way, right, the force has to come from here or here. Um, and also, the head is, you know, moving around. So you have to steady the target area, right? Okay, so say he throws a punch, check, he strike, and then you're using this to, to steady the tempo area, right? the, the target area. Right? So from here, you strike here, check here, and then. So you're away from that arm, and you're controlling his balance. And with the elbow here, you're controlling, steadying up the target area. Right, so you go around the other side. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or I can do it like this. One, two, so control the tempo with this. Right. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. So this, the elbow control here, controls the target area here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, and then if we're going to do a technique against the point on the solar plexus, because most people are covering that point, so you have to you have to opening up the opponent's defense and also the force for for the map the force has to come from this angle not from here not from here but from this angle right? if i were going to hit here the force has to come from slightly downward angle if i hit the tempo force has to come from here if i hit this point here the force has to come directly from the back here. Right? So for this point here, the solar plexus, the force has to come from here. Right? So the person is like this. Right? So from here, you take this. Right? Okay. So from here, take this, and then you control the elbow here, and you're attacking. So from here, right, so from here, right, jam up here and here. Jam up. OK. 
Okay, so we turn around. Right. So from here, you take this, and then you have this point here. Right. So this point controls that point. Bong, lap and park, and strike here. Yeah. Bong, lap, strike here. Yeah. Bong. Okay. We're going to run through the target area, the, the pressure point area, the tempo under the jaw, the, on the tip of this throw, and um, behind the head, on the stem of this head, right? and on the solar plexus. Right? Um, so we're going to do this, this point here. Right? Um, <clears throat> OK. So he throws uh, punch in, park sao, punch underneath, lap sao, and finger jab, or this. Right? So you go from here, park sao, lap sao, finger jab, or with the PMG, or with the finger. Right, so using from here, lift this up, and then you're controlling. You can actually go straight into that, but you exchange, that's fine. Right? So you've got from here, one, two, three, right? Or three. Right? Okay. So one, two, three. One, two, three, right? So you lift this up. You lift this up and then bring it down, and then you check the elbow controlling this point here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, on this side. One, two, three. 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 Okay. Now, another point is, is about here, about here, right? So, because that's underneath the arm. Right. So you could do this by, if you draw the arm out from here, right, and then you can strike, you can strike from here, right. So you got from here, hit here, you draw this, strike from here. Right. Right. Using this to control. One, two, right? Or one, two, three, right? So you open this up and then you get this one here. Okay. Okay, the other side. One. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, now we're going to run through the, uh, the technique for the target area for, for the pressure points, the debug technique. Right. So the first one, um, 
we want the temple area, right? So you got from here, from here, and you got So the second technique, we want technique on the throw here. So he's coming in from here. So you got from here, punch, take this across. So you can send this palm across his face here. Right, so it blocks his vision, and then, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then next, next target area is here. Right. So he can throw round punch. From here, you take this around, hit, take this around. controlling the elbow and you're controlling his balance opening the target area BOEC okay so the next target area is here right so uh, Punch comes in, and you have to open up this arm, right? So, so maybe punch comes in, you open up this arm from here. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then the next target area will be will be here. Right. Right. So you catch the elbow, catch the elbow, so you open up from there. Okay, and then the target area for here, you just have to go inside, so he, uh, he throws a punch. Right. So here, and oh, from here. We want to show you some street self-defense technique against knives. Um, when you deal with knife, you don't want to stick your arm out there because he's going to switch. Uh, he's going to cut your arm. You pull your arm away. He's going to go straight onto your throat. So I think it would be better if you don't sacrifice your your balance. It'd be better that you stick your throat out so you know you know he's going to come here. Right. So you're going to going to take that. Right. So you're going to, from here, take this across, take it up, and then drop very sharply. 
So take it up very high and whip it down. Right, so you go from here, take this up, whip it down. Okay, so I do it slowly. One, two, three. Okay, so you just basically, you push, right, so you make your body disappear behind the, in front of the knife. Take this up very high, straight arm, and whip it down very sharp. Right, okay. Um, you can also do it like this, from here, and then you drag him, drag him, keep dragging him. Right, so, right here. Yeah. You still have to take your, keep your body away from here. Right. Oh, drag. Okay, we switch position. And then drag him down. Okay, so if you have somebody slash at you, right, you stop with straight arm because this is the strongest position. Take it over head, take this arm. All right, so arm break here. There's a pressure point in here, just above the el uh, elbow bone. Here, this point here. Stake, right, so you face this point, overhead. Take it across, keep going. All right, here. Overhead, here. So you use your bone on your arm here, grind on that pressure point. So here, overhead, because you're gonna keep moving this leg, because you're gonna cut into your leg otherwise. All right? So you can push this down, keep pushing this down, pushing this down. So on the, on the back slash, it's very much the same. You just stop it, and then you just pull it back here. Pull it back here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, apart from that, maybe he hold his knife this way, he's coming overhead, right? So you stop here, and then you take, take it across. Okay. Right. So maybe you have to stop it before it reaches, before it reaches the end here. So here. Okay, don't so step in here. Right, make sure this arm is right angle. Right, no good here. So the arm has to be right angle. Here. Okay. I uh, want to show you some technique against uh, a long pole. Um, when you when you deal with a long pole, you got to block. You got to block with the hardest, toughest part of your palm, which is uh, which is uh, your palm and the mid part of your arm, and you're going to block close to. This. So the whole theory is that uh, because the power, say if he swing, he swing at me here, the 
the power actually is come from uh, will be the most powerful at the, at the end here. So from here, right, so what I did is I'm going to have my grip wider than his grip. So the leverage is much, much more than his grip because his grip is closer. So his grip is, say if his grip is here, and I always, always have a yin yan grip that one that facing up, one that facing down, and I twist this arm and I pull down and I can, right? So if he picks it up, picks it up from here, right? So he picks up, okay? Block here, take this around here. Right, block, take this up, around. Okay. Now, uh, overhead, hi, block. Right. Overhead, right, so you stop here, comes down. Now we're going to show you against a small stick. Um, with the small stick, you block close to where the hand is. Right? Block here. You rip it off from here. Block here. Stick. You steady here. Slide to the end so that's your pivoting point. Rip this off and. Is off. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> maybe a back swing. Same thing. You block close to close to where where he holds the sticks. From here, you're using the arm brake. Okay. Um, in case he come charging from here, then you can go around from here. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Hi, we're going to show you the T meditation for nerve and courage. Uh, first, when, I, uh, we, you, when you do the T meditation, you put your tongue on the upper palate, on the, behind the teeth, on the ridge there. And when you contact at that point, it connects the two meridian, the front trunk meridian, the yamak, the back trunk meridian, the dogmak. And then, when your breath come in, imagine it goes up the cranium, down the spine, and loop around and come out from the nose. So when you do that, you activate the chi, and you have six meridian on this side and six on that side. You have the lung meridian, the large intestine, the circular sex, triple heart, the heart, and small intestine. So when they're facing each other, once you connected the front trunk and back trunk meridian and this forms a circuit, and you would find that they would repel each other because the same polarity are facing each other. So if you do this exercise, you move your hands down and up, you will find that it will sort of tingle. You will feel the tingle and uh, and and your finger. So you, if you relax your finger, you would even see your finger moves. 
uh, involuntarily. And if you push this in and out, you push this in and out, you feel, you will feel a force. You feel the force that pushing you. Okay. Now, this is the general pose. And the pose we want is this pose, your palms facing each other. So when you do this pose, your palms start to get warmer. You do this pose for eight breaths. And then you put left palm, the knuckle is on top of the belly button and then the right palm. And then you continue this circular breath for eight breaths. So you would feel your palm is getting warm and this is called the dantin, that's where you store your chi. So after the egg breath, you shift your concentration on here, on this pressure point here, you shift your concentration. So then you come out, rub your hand gently together. So with this pressure point here, there's three, the three main points. This point, and the solar plexus, and the dantin. The three main points. This point gives you stores your central vital energy. This point gives you like the equilibrium and this point gives you the courage and restore your nerve so uh, we run through it again you start it off with four breath from here tongue touching the upper palate and then go into this breath and you put your palm on the dantin and focus on this point here And thank you very much. And remember, practice hard. And also, we have many, many good videos here that you could use as a reference. Thank you very much for your attention.